Alrighty, in this video, we'll be covering the Qualified Entities Program. Qualified Entities Program, or QEP for short, ultimately has been created to minimize any operational geofencing restrictions for governmental and public safety users that have been pre-verified. So through the QEP, DJI creates long-term unlocking certificates, and those are based on the area or country of operations of the applicants. The QEP program is currently available in the United States, Canada, and Europe. So you can see a little workflow here, uh, a little different than the unlocking certificates we discussed earlier. Essentially, you want to A, complete the QEP application, B, download the unlocking certificate to the drone and enable it, and then there is no geozone restrictions for operations within the country of application. We'll be covering the QEP application in this video, and then in a later video, you can see more details on downloading those unlocking certificates and enabling them. You can download the application documents from the address here, also linked to in the video description. On that website there, you'll see options for both North America and Europe to download and the pertinent support email addresses, qep.na at dji.com for North America, qep.europe at dji.com for Europe. Just going over the application here as a few things can be a bit confusing for folks. On the US or Canada side, you need to provide a letter on department letterhead. You can simply state your department is requesting for all the listed aircraft to be unlocked through the QEP program review and complete the QEP application form, terms and conditions, and then provide a copy of a pilot certificate. It could be 107, COA, Transport Canada pilot certificate. And you only need one of these. So if your chief pilot's filling it out, you can just provide, for example, the 107 certificate and maybe the 107 recurrent documentation for them. Don't need to do it for each team member. On the Europe side, I need to provide a DJI account created with the institutional email address, such as maybe UAS team at police.co.uk or similar. Review and complete the QEP application form and the terms and conditions. For both Europe and US slash Canada, we'll want to fill out the user and craft Excel spreadsheet that comes along with those downloads. It is optional depending on the drone fleet size. So if you just have a drone or two and single account, you can just include that within the application. But ultimately you can click on group one tab at the bottom of the document. Spreadsheet guidelines just provides some information on filling it out as well. And the first column is just going to be DJI accounts. And when we're saying DJI accounts, this is just the email address that you use to log into your DJI account, either online or in the app. If you need to create a DJI account for the email address, go to dji.com, click on the person icon in the top right, and you can create that account. You do need to do this before the submission. We can't generate unlocking certificates if there is no account created. Second column is the flight controller serial numbers. There is a document detailing this process included with the downloads. The letter O and the number zero can be confused. If you're in doubt, you can just share a picture with the QEP support email. And then on the right of the device's flight controller serial number, you'll see the drone type. For finding that flight controller serial number, you can just connect the drone, remote controller, and mobile device. If we're using DJI Pilot, you go to manual flight or you can just go into the camera view, tap on the three dots in the top right to open the menu, tap on the three dots in the sub menu, you can see it highlighted in green in this image, tap on the about menu option and then scroll down to flight controller serial number. If you're using DJI Ground Station RTK with the Phantom 4 RTK, same idea, connect drone, RC and mobile device, go to the menu, select the aircraft option, and then view the flight controller serial number there. The third column I mentioned there where you put the device in, that is a drop-down menu. So you can just click on the cell and you'll have a drop-down menu. 
If you're not seeing, for example, Mavic 2 Enterprise Zoom or Advanced, you just select Mavic 2 Enterprise and same deal with Mavic 2, Mavic 2 Pro or Mavic 2 Zoom, you just select Mavic 2. So essentially just select the closest option if you don't see the full name of the drone that's being utilized. Unlocking certificates are going to be generated based on all accounts listed. So if you had multiple accounts listed in column one, there would be unlocking certificates listed for all drones um, for the accounts that were provided. So you don't need to list the accounts multiple times in order for unlocking certificates to be generated for all drones. That being said, we do recommend if it works for your workflow to utilize just one DJI account if you're using multiple DJI accounts with the same drone, each time a DJI account logs in on the respective DJI app, the unlocking certificate for that account must be downloaded and enabled. If you're using the same DJI account, the unlocking certificate only needs to be downloaded and enabled once. So really simplifies the second part of the process here, uh, the downloading and unlocking the certificate with the drone itself if you're just using a singular DJI account. After completing the previous steps, I'm going to go ahead and email the documents slash application onto the email address for your region. And one more common question here, all aircraft pretty much can be unlocked. And if you, was, you happen to have something very old, like a Phantom 1 or a Phantom 2. How long does it take? Looking at about 24 to 74 hours for US or Canada, Europe, 10 working days. If you haven't heard back after those times, you can follow up with the QEP email address. Make sure you specified the correct email address. If you still haven't received a note back, odds are there might be something going on with your email server blocking the reply email as spam. So would try a different generic email account such as your a Gmail can still send the information from there. If you'd like to add or remove aircraft, you can send an updated spreadsheet or just the updated drone information onto the relevant email address. Also, if you have any flight controller serial numbers to remove because a drone was lost, stolen, or replaced, you can go ahead and email that address as well. A note, if your drone is repaired or replaced, there's a good chance a flight controller serial number has also changed with the internals of the drone. So you can go ahead and check that when you get the drone back and send an email to have that added to your QEP after the fact as well. If you have a POC that's changed or your department was previously part of QEP and you're not sure what the current status is, you can go ahead and email the QEP team for more information. Uh, if it's just coming from a generic email account instead of your department's official account, we will need something official from your department on letterhead just stating your position at the department so we know who you are with. And then if your agency either government or public safety is outside the US, Canada, or Europe, you can create an account on our FlySafe portal and then submit a few documents for faster unlocking and longer validity periods. Covered that in our previous video on how to use the FlySafe portal and submit unlocking requests there. If you need to fly the drone higher than 500 meters from the takeoff point, perhaps due to mountainous terrain, this can be done. Uh, just go ahead and email the QEP team with a request to increase the maximum altitude. And that is for the following drones listed. That capability is available. Phantom 4 Pro, V2 versions, the RTK, multi-spectral, Mavic Air, Air 2, Air 2S, Mavic 2, Mavic 2 Enterprise Series, Inspire 2, Matrice 200 V2 series, the 300 RTK series, uh, Agris FPV, and the Mavic Mini 1 and 2. And then finally, in regards to how a circle unlock works, uh, just a little more context here so you're understanding uh, based on your country, if you have a circle unlock, uh, the drone uses fairly simple logic here. If it's inside the 3D shape, 
uh, aka the circle here it is able to take off if it's outside the 3d shape 3d shape then it's not able to take off so if your drone doesn't have a gps connection and locates itself to the zero zero coordinate which is not inside the 3d shape the drone is not going to be able to take off when the unlocking certificate is enabled so hopefully that gives a good overview of the qep program here and our next video will be covering downloading and enabling the unlocking certificates in more depth and troubleshooting steps if you're having any issues there. Thanks.